Yes, you beautiful people. Welcome to Fresh UK Podcast. This week, we have an absolute legend, hence his title name, Steve, the legend, Ward. He is a Guinness World Record holder for the, being the oldest professional boxer in the whole world. Steve, how are you doing, my friend? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> really good, man. Welcome, welcome. Good. So glad to have you on the show, mate. I was yes, so, mate. so grateful that you're coming on here. Like, I'm literally, honestly, I'm a little bit starstruck because like- <laughs> Privileged to be on. You're the oh. first world record holder we've had on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been going very long, but so obviously you're from the area, aren't you? From Mansfield? Yeah, I come from Nottingham, Icing Green, originally. Originally, yeah. Born and bred. Right. You know, mm. the good part of Ice and Green. Yeah. Is, is there a good part? There isn't one. There isn't, <laughs> there isn't one. one. <laughs> I know. No, and, uh, it was all right down there. I got uh, married. I come to Liverpool for it and wait. Solston, right. that area. Second marriage. Happy now. Happy as Larry. Mm. And I'm in Mansfield. Good old Mansfield. Good old yeah. Mansfield. <laughs> I've never known people like the Mansfield people, though, right. ever. Talk about being clingy. Yeah. Fantastic to have that because they've backed me up and they've got behind me. They've took me on board. It's fantastic. Mm, it's like you're one of it's our really own. Nice. Like I say, one of yeah. our own. I'm not even from around here, so. One of my, one of our own, you know, one of my, I know, I know you've still got the tiny bit of a Nottingham accent twang to, to some of the words, like you said, clingy then and he's clingy. Yeah, still, yeah. He's still not lost that, still got the bit of the, do, do, do you have family still in Nottingham? Do you go and see them? I know it's in down no, the road. But. I still go down Nottingham. I've got no family there, no. Right. But uh, I do go down Nottingham because I've got a lot of friends down there still. Mm. Yeah. Blacks, whites, yellows. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. Fantastic people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, so you're a world record holder, boxer, yeah. legend, you know. So, how, how, <laughs> how did all that start then? How did you, how did that become a thing in your life? That all kicked off really with my dad. Mm. I was getting bullied at school, you know, the usual scenario. You're joking. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this one particular day, the, the bullies took my bike. I'd be about nine year old. Come home crying, tears in your eyes. What do you think my dad did? Well, back then he probably would. Yeah. Belt him around the tab. Mm. Why didn't you hit him? Why didn't you? Why didn't you fight back? Yeah. You don't come home here crying. If you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. God, he won't kill it. <laughs> and uh, he ended up, he took me to a, a boxing club, Nottingham School of Boxing, which was uh, run by Harold Bamford. And Arthur Mason in them years. Yeah. Dave Needham, mm -hmm. former Commonwealth Games gold medalist, he was there as wow. well. And uh, I hated it. I bloody hated it. Every <laughs> minute of it. Well, the, the, the boxing or the claw ball? The box, just everything. I just hated it. At the, the time, boxing. you felt like you were forced into it. Like oh, I was forced into yeah. <laughs> it. It was a matter of you do it or else. Mm. And uh, I, I just didn't like it. He told the trainers, I want you to put him into the ring. He says, really knock him about a bit, bring him with the bigger lads, toughen him up. No way. Jesus. You know, for two years, honestly, I was coming back, I'd got a bit of a black eye, blooded nose, wobbly teeth. It wasn't good. Mm. I hated it. Now, this went on for two years, three times a week. Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, it just it just want something I wanted to do. Mm. But what? on the on your eleventh birthday, you can fight. And they put me in the ring. They got my first fight. I can even remember this guy's name. It was Paul Ironmonger. <laughs> wow! You don't and, forget that. <laughs> oh God, no, no. And uh, it was at Arnold Working Man's Club, which could have been like Vegas to me. Mm. Right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'd got two years pent up aggression for this kid. Yeah. This is why I'd had to do it. Mm. And I come out like a man possessed. Well, it didn't, it didn't go very far. Mm. You know, when I beat him, like, still didn't like the boxing, though. <clears throat> no, not even a little bit better. Like, once you've obviously, you come out, you're your no. first professional fight sort of thing. So, and so first damage. Yeah. Fight, yeah. So when, and, did it, when did it change then? What, what changed? Well, it, probably about me eight. Eight, four, ninth, amateur fight. I'd won them all. And I thought, you know, this ain't bad. And it would get me in favour with my dad as well. He was loving it. Yeah, yeah. Because you were winning as well. Yeah, well, yeah. just doing it. So you're making uh, your dad proud. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, my mum and dad liked, yeah. you know. 
I got no brothers or sisters. Mm. And uh, I thought, this ain't that bad. And I began to like it from then on. Oh, do, do you think if you hadn't have won the first eight games, you wouldn't have liked it? Do you think, do you think uh, winning helped a bit, maybe? Winning always helps, well, don't course, it? Yes, yeah. It always <laughs> helps. But I'd, I'd say I'd probably still like it because it was taking part in it and doing it and the friends you were making yeah. in the club, mm. they were fantastic. Mm. It, you can go in there, beat the crap, I'll say it for how it is. Mm. Mm. You beat the crap out of somebody and they're your best mate straight after. Mm. Yeah. This is yeah. what I've, yeah, this is what I've, I mean, in, yeah, because during my life, I've done a few martial arts here and there, not, not for very yeah. long, but in sort of any like contact or, or combat sport or martial arts or anything like that, what I've come to learn is, I wouldn't say all of them, but the majority of people, they're really nice people and they're like, yeah. they're so self-disciplined and like to get on with other people. And, so, you know, it, it's the thing, isn't it? You think, oh, they're a fighter. And straight away yeah. you think, oh, they're, 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 you know, they're feisty. <laughs> but, the, you know, just out, yeah. out of the ring. They get the a most... bad perception on you, don't they? Yeah, yeah. but out as of the ring, as, they're lovely yeah. people. As soon as you say martial arts, contact fighting, mm. boxing, judo, anything so, like that, people begin to look down. Mm. And it's... It's totally the opposite. Yeah. yeah, it's like the opposite, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a fantastic sport. Yeah, mm. great sport. Everybody's friends. All right, you have the the mean talk before and that no to nose kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I'd I'd like to say uh, it's all just a fast sport, but sometimes it ain't. Sometimes <laughs> you really because oh. you're that psyched up, mate, aren't you? Yeah. Do, do you do all that? I've got to I've got to ask because um, we were on about it on the last podcast. Uh, about semen retention and not ejaculating for so long before a fight and things like that. Do you do, <laughs> do, you do things like that? Because obviously a lot of professional boxers do, don't they? Yeah, like football I players. Do. Yeah, exactly. It's one of these I things, do. like you say, you know, we can have a laugh yeah. and a joke about it, but there's a lot of science yeah. behind it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what Rocky said? Women weak in legs. Ah. Yeah. You've seen me stumbling in here, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, mate. Well, you're not fighting at the moment, so it's allowed. No, it? I'm all right at present. Yeah, yeah, make the best of it. Yeah. So what happened after then, then, when you started to like it then? What's, what point did you start well, to uh, enjoy it? Was it the more you won? Because you've had, like, how fights. many fights have you had? 100 and... 148 amateur fights. Wow. Lost 12, 136, 72 wow. stoppages. Jesus wow. Christ. Stoppages because you're both just... They were either knocked out or... Oh, right. No, they were either knocked out or... They couldn't go on. Oh, yeah, they were they counted out. So. Yeah, what about, yeah, yeah. Did, what about professional fights? Professional fights, I didn't do so well in that. Right. And I'm the first to admit it because my dad died. Mm. And Took I, it, I yeah. lost my backbone. Yeah. Took the wind out of your sails a little bit. Ooh, of that. I've really done me. Mm. I really lost everything. Mm. Had about, about 60 pro fights, one about half of them, something like that. Mm. Right. But... It never meant anything to me. No. Okay. The amateurs was the ones. No. I loved it. And you're going for gold. Yeah. It was good. Awesome. Mm. See, it, uh, I remember one thing at school. I've got to tell you about this because this will put a smile on your face. Mm. There I was. I was, what, 13, 14 years old. Yeah, about 13, 14. Now, Every school's got the bully, haven't they? Yeah, at least one. Yeah, <laughs> and this particular school were no different. I, I went to Ellis Guildford School, Bar Lane, Nottingham. And uh, I went in the gym this particular day. And this guy, had always got a bit of a thing about hitting me and making fun. He actually hit me around the head with a badminton racket. Jeez. And uh, I could feel the lump coming straight up, tightening up. And I turned around and I walked out. Of course, people were saying, oh, you're a coward, you're a coward. And I went into the changing room. I just had a look at it and I thought, I've got to do something here. Mm -hmm. Enough's enough. What would my dad want me to do? I thought, yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> so I went, Didn't take much thinking when I you went thought. back into the gym, Mike. Is there? Is he's still thinking that he's yeah, yeah. The man big big man rag, rag holding hit. a weapon. Yeah, he had a go at me again. I went underneath, bang, 
and our chin nim, our chin nim proper. With no gloves on. <laughs> With no gloves on. <laughs> he went down like a sack of spuds. <laughs> but, and, uh, so you better didn't you? It didn't hit you over the head with a badminton racket again, he did it? A, he didn't get a chance. <laughs> I went down to grab him, to pull him up, to pull yeah. him and do a job, put yeah. a job on him. And as I got hold of him, somebody got hold of me here. And of course, I let him go and I turned around and it was Mr. Acklam, the gym master. No way. The gym teacher. He says, put him down, Ward. He says, you're a bully. I thought, what? Yeah. You know, they don't you look at what's happened. They don't see that. Mm. He says, get in that changing room. And they come in the changing room with me. Went into the corner, turned around, threw these boxing gloves at me. He says, put them on. He says, I'll teach you manners. Oh. Now, these boxing gloves were the old horsehair ones. Oh, God. I don't know if you've ever come across them, but the horsehair protrudes through the ladder and it sort of prickles you like needles. Oh, nasty. And they come up to my elbow. I mean, I want a big lad like. Mm. And uh, he, he says, get back in that gym now. And he come in with these gloves on. He says, I'll teach you some manners. Well, by then, there must have been 300 kids coming to this gym. <laughs> spectators. Yeah, <was> spectators, yeah. <laughs> Crowd were raising. And uh, it, it says, I'll show you. And he's, he's jabbing out at me and I'm just moving. I'm thinking, what can I do? What? It's my teacher. Mm. What can I do with him? And he's, he's really trying to hit me. And I thought, Sod this. Left, right, left, up combination. Boom, boom, boom. And he's down. <laughs> and he's down. <laughs> and uh, he, he got back up again. <clears throat> and I hit him with another combination. He's down again. This time his nose has gone poof. Oof. I thought, come on, get up. You're good enough for some more. Mm. And he got up again and I hit him. Oh, it must have been a dozen times. Mm really fast and moving and everything. And I ended up, uppercut, bang. He went down and they were clambering about and all the kids are cheering. Wow. <laughs> and you'll never ever think for a minute what he said to me. He got up, what do you think he said to me? Well, <clears throat> he probably should have like, had a go at you, but he probably congratulated you yeah. or something, didn't he know? What did he? He got up and he says, <sighs> Let that be a lesson to you, Ward. <laughs> Never do it again. <laughs> Are you joking? And there were Just, that many people still talk about this. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. But in his head, in his head he's, he couldn't, he couldn't. He well, couldn't. What could he do? What yeah. could he do? He couldn't. <laughs> it's a room full of kids, you know, he can't like. Mm. No, but yeah. God, he was slow. Yeah. Oh. He was too slow. So you'd already started training by this point. You'd already been... I was 13 or 14. Oh. I were right up in the schoolboy championships and everything. Oh. <laughs> And when I left school, he come to me and he shot me and he says, you never told me you were a boxer. I said, you never asked me to strike him. <laughs> he says, that was underhanded. I says, no, that was clever. Yeah, that's yeah, right, that yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, <Awesome. clears throat> it says it right, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Right, when uh, the boxing went on and I had some cracking fights, Went all over the place. That's the best part of the boxing. Travel. You go all over. Yeah. So where have you been? Have you been like Vegas and stuff like that? Or? Uh, I fought in New York. Awesome. New There's, York. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Germany. Because yeah, when did you, when, so you started boxing how many years ago? Well, 50, 50 years ago. No, 50. Ooh, 50. Let's see. But then you stopped. I'm, I'm, six, I'm 64 now. Mm. I'm 64 and I started at nine. So you're talking, what, 55 years ago, something wow. like that. Wow, 55 years ago you started long, boxing. Long but then you had a, a long break as well, didn't you, for 22, yeah, 23 I, years? Yeah, I had a break. What it was, I went out the amateurs and I went into the pros, mm. 1977. Mm. I was turned pro by my old instructor, like uh, Mr. Ken Page. Mm. He'd been signed on for taking a team across to Guernsey, mm -hmm. amateurs, and it was the only way he could stay in boxing still. Right. Mm. And he said, uh, will you turn pro with me? And I thought, well, I've had a lot of amateur fights and I'm going to fights now 
turning up for them and people don't want to fight you because you've had too much right. experience. You're too, yeah. They look at your cards, well, look at your card, then another, then another, then another, and they mm. think, no. So it, it was good for me to turn pro in a way. Different kettle of fish altogether. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, uh, my first pro fight was at uh, Cambridge. Mike, Mike Clemo, remember his name as well. <laughs> Good with names, aren't you? Yeah. I'm terrible with names. I, <laughs> I won it, but uh, it won, it didn't have the same feeling. Mm. And with me and dad passing away, I just, I couldn't be bothered. No, you weren't feeling it anymore. No, I wasn't training as hard as mm. I should have. Yeah. And uh, it, it ended up, I was chasing a guy for a title. This guy was called Dennis Sheehan. He also belonged to Not School of Boxing the same time as me. No way. So yeah. we've got a little bit of back Some, Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was with David Needham. He was looking after me, getting me fights and everything. I'd split up with him and he got Sheehan. Ah. So, of course, he would be protected from me. Mm. Couldn't get near him. Just every every time you mentioned it, there were big money mentioned, and oh. he just didn't want to know. Really? And then this one particular day, it was at uh, a big place at, at Leicester Granby Hall, is it? De Monfort Hall, Granby Hall? I'm not sure. Huge place. He was defending the title. He'd got the, uh, it was a light middleweight What's a border control title? And uh, his opponent, he got ill, couldn't do it on mm. the day. Ooh. Every ticket was sold. <laughs> so they were getting a little bit dire now. So they had to come to me, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to fight Dennis? Yes. <laughs> well, are you fit enough to go? Yes. <laughs> Straight in there. <laughs> and uh, do you fancy the fight? Yes. <laughs> Just tell me where it is. <laughs> I went up there, talk about hostile crowd. He'd got all his mates there because it, it had been on for some time. Entourage. Yeah. I'd got one person. Jeez. Just one person shouting for me. Wow, wow. And uh, this was the time, this, this was the one. And I beat him. Ooh. I stopped him in the fifth round. He couldn't go on and he'd got a very bad cut like, a, like an horse show. Real, real bad cut. So uh, I won it, but they had last laugh on me. Because I wasn't the named opponent, they made it a non-title fight. What? Oh. Yeah. Really? Mm. That sucks, doesn't it? That does. and wow, that's... I never, ever got the chance to fight him. Right. That's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame that they do that as well, so you didn't get the title and whatever. And... It was devious. Yeah. It were a dirty trick. Mm. But that would need him. Right. Checking. Yeah, I know so. I know so. Mm. He's no longer with us. I'd say God bless him. Rome won't mean it. So really? No. Uh, One of them. Not a bad blood. Yeah, yeah bad blood. <laughs> and look, it's uh, difficult. There's no need for know. it, was he? Like, yeah. what? No, I mean, I mean, it, it was fair and everything. Mm. It, uh, it was just one of them jobs. So mm. not long after that, I was chasing him to fight him again mm. for the title, obviously. Couldn't get the chance. I thought, do you know, I've done. Mm. And in 1977, I retired from the ring. Mm. Right. That were me. That were me done. No training anymore or anything? Or did you still keep uh, a bit of the training up? I still kept me training up because it wasn't long after I went behind closed doors. Mm. Right. Now, I'd like to tell you, lads, but I'm not going to mention the names on that because I value my life. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good on you. Can you. Imagine, <clears throat> I was looked after by uh, some foreign people, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not mentioning names, like I said. Yeah. And uh, I had forty-one and a one forty-one wow. around the world twice. Wow. Uh -huh. mm. Like you say, behind the behind the curtain, behind the scenes, sort yes, of. Yes. Yeah. Behind the occasions. scenes. Occasions. It uh, it wasn't a seedy job. Right. It was proper properly done, wow. professionally done. There wasn't any of these 
little barns where you it's yeah in, uh, it was like fight proper, club yeah yeah like yeah, no gloves no none of that places. well there were no gloves on was it not oh no wow. Oh, wow. oh wow hence the hands right jesus mm. oh yeah look at that jesus, man. Jeez. yeah we've had one or two i know yeah like you're saying <laughs> so, you come in you like you've Got a few battle scars on you, aren't you? From in, in and out the ring, like you yeah, said. Did you did you do rotor cuff damage as well? Like you messed you yeah. messed your rotor cuff up in your shoulder for a while. Well, I fought I fought for the world title three years ago. I That's brought right. it to Mansfield, as I said, I would the WBC, the World Boxing Confederation, and the guy I fought, whew, six foot seven German, Jesus, mm. massive. What was, his, knocked, what was his name? And Andreas. And, Andreas. Sitton. Yeah, that's right. And not. To, he knocked Danny Williams out, the man who knocked Tyson out. Jesus. Wow. And the first six rounds, I were blasting him. I know. I've seen one, him. I've, I've seen him. They're on, they're on YouTube. You can go, yeah. you can see these fights, people. And then the, the seventh round, me, no reason. Me, my arm just didn't want to work anymore. You're like, mm, why is and that? Not, it went down and I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to get it to stay there and, just got no feeling but you're that pumped with adrenaline as well yeah and you're thinking you can't feel any pain as no, such like when i'm the, when i'm full, full, full of adrenaline i can't feel anything so there were no pain at all in it mm. no pain whatsoever and i thought well, what's what's happening with me what's happening and of course i was wide open down yeah. this side and it caught me to the temple i went down i got straight back up mm. which perhaps should have took the air you can <clears throat> but I got straight back up, but the referee looked at me and they come over. He says, I'm sorry, Steve. He says, but I know I rotate a cuff injury when I see it. So yeah. I'm stopping the fight. Now I've actually got the official scorecards for that. Mm. That's something they never give you. <laughs> yeah. But they gave him me as a special gift because of what happened and how it happened. Mm. And at that present minute in time, I was seven points in front. Wow, wow. Jesus. Can I'd only got to stand up to win. Shit. So, so yeah. you know at you know, the time, the ref said this to you. Were, yeah. you, were, you, were, you, were you like, no, no chance, that's bollocks, that's yeah, this. Like, were, well, were you still sort of like, I'm not having it? I says, oh, come on, come on, ref. I says, I can do this. He says, no, no, no. He says, you're going to do serious damage. You're going to do more damage, yeah. And he was probably right. It was, yeah. actually, how it was, it was right. Yeah. Because after that, it was, what, two days later, I was at the hospital and everything. Yep, yeah, rotator cuff. It wasn't long after that, I was having it operated on. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. So Special in a job. way, like you said, it was the right thing to, for him to do that because yeah. you could have made that operation a lot more, more a lot, a lot more complicated, yeah. couldn't it? But it was know? nice for him to give you the scorecard, though. So at least you kind of oh, know God, that yeah. if it had carried on, you'd have probably um, had that one. And wouldn't you know, I still look at them scorecards. <laughs> I still get them three judges <laughs> frame them, get them in a frame. They are in the frame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. nothing. If only, if mm. only. It's, if as, only good, it's, it. yeah. it's yeah. as good as a win, mate. That's as good yeah. as a win. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing was, he were a perfect gentleman. Andreas Sidden, full respect for that. Not younger as well? Uh, yeah. Was it eight years younger or something like that? Yeah, about eight to nine years. Mm. I've got, got a lot of respect for him because he, mm. the next day I had to go and meet him because we were, you know, taking all the photos and all this. Mm. He says to me, yeah, I have got a gift for you. I says, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, expect he was going to chin you or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, was, I was ready in case. <laughs> he says, I've got a gift for you. And uh, a lot of people didn't realise he'd, he'd got about 12 world titles. Wow. Mm. Yeah. He gave me, it was the WBU, World Boxing Union, Championship of the World Belt. Wow. And he gave me the WBB, World Championship Belt. He says, they... Or yours, he says. You are the real champion. If it hadn't have been for your arm, he says. My corner says you would have beat me. You nearly knocked me out twice. Wow, that's a true, a true that is true sportsman, that isn't it? To it have is, to say that, I better but do you that. know, he says you make them your own. Mm. Well, I'm not going to put Steve Ward world champion on because I wasn't. No. So what I've done, Andreas Sidden, 
champion of the world, blah, blah, blah. On the other side, number one contender, Steve Ward. Wow. So that way you're doing no dirties. No. Uh, no. You're saying it for it's, how it was. Yeah, the yeah but then you're still in, then it tells a story forever, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, That's you, amazing, yeah. that. Such a nice guy. That's oh, such a cool really story, really, man, yeah. isn't it? Definitely. But, uh, what, what I, went through, I went through a lot of things to get there because this had never fight again. I had a serious accident where a ton and a quarter lump of concrete fell on my foot. Ow. Yeah. Is that through work or Tarmac, just? Tarmac, yeah. Oh, Jesus. And uh, So how long, uh, how, long was that, how long were you out with that then? How, that surely had to... That was 2006. And they said I'd never fight again. I went to Harley Street specialists. They said, no, no, no. You've now got something called complex regional pain syndrome in it. Now, just think, lads, how I felt all them years of boxing and being told, you've done. Mm. They said I'd never walk again without an aid and all this, crutches mm. and what have you. And uh, it went on and on and on. All the doctors, they all said the same. And I've got a little Chinese mate because I also done martial arts, mm. Wing Chun. Yeah. And I also done uh, Bando Gilly, Indonesian Kung Fu. It's like a praying pray mantis style. Wow. And uh, wow. yeah, I've done them for 30 odd years. Jesus. I love all that stuff. Yeah, I love the so, The crane, the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you hit at, you rip at. Mm. But uh, wow. this little Chinese guy who I know, he says, my uncle says he can put you right. I says, great, great. I was clutching at straws. If you'd have come to me and said, ah, we can put you right, I'd have, I'd have tried it. Because uh, mm. it was getting desperate. And uh, I says, where is your uncle thinking? Birmingham, London. <laughs> Hong Kong. Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> no way. A week later, I was on the plane going out. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was... I was Really, you were determined desperate. to get that foot sorted, and uh, I was out there a few weeks. It was done all on well, you say underhanded, I say under the table, mm. you know, naughty, naughty. And when I come back, uh, I got off the plane, went through all the rigmarole in the airport, and my wife was there waiting for me. She says, Oh, it's still bad, and I just chucked the crutches away. I says, I'm on the mend. I'm on the mend. Mm. Wow. And I walked. I couldn't do very much. Yeah. But I walked. Uh, after, and, they, after they said you wouldn't ever again. Yeah. Wow. And a week later, I started training. <laughs> Jeez. So what did, what did they do? Did they operate on it? Did they just, did they do whatever they needed to do? The, Ma voodoo magic spells and I, stuff? Or? They operated on it. Right. I've got the stitch marks on it and that, but I don't know what they actually did. Right. And I'm not bothered. <laughs> no. Because they got it right. Yeah. Mm. Now I said to people, "Is it definitely your foot they put back on?" <laughs> <laughs> it is a different colour, like you know, and it's very airy, but it, it looks similar. It's, it's got five toes. Hey, if it works, Webbed. man, if it works. I can swim faster with this foot. Yeah. Man. I keep mm. going in circles now. I, know, I can't wait at all. Well, no, but like you said, at least uh, they've, they've done the job, haven't they? They've you know? done the job, and uh, I said to people before I went. If I get my mobility back, I'm going to get back in that ring. Mm. Well, I've been training for some time now. And I was getting quite sharp. I was running 10 miles. And it was getting more and more and more. I thought maybe it's time to have a look at this. Mm. So uh, I went to somebody who I've known for years and years. We were both amateurs together and everything. And he's a promoter, he's doing really well for himself. He's in the EBF, European Boxing Federation, Mr. John Ashton. Mm -hmm. And he also fought for European titles, British titles as pro. He's got a good, mm -hmm. good track record. Mm -hmm. And I went to him and uh, when we got the formalities out of the way of how are you and everything, I said, I want to fight again, John. He said, what? <laughs> He says, how old are you? I says, oh, I'm about 54, they're about, so I want to fight again. Mm. He says, I can't see this, Steve. I says, please give me a chance on one of your shows. Well, he come to see me training and everything, and I got the chance. Mm. And it were, at, uh, it were at Derby, Pennine Hotel. Nice. Yeah. 
Uh, this time I can't remember his name who we were fighting. You've, you've praised me oh, for all the name oh, remembering yeah. and I've forgotten it. You allowed one. Yeah. You allowed one or two. Yeah, you allowed one. He was 30 years younger than me. Mm. How many? And 30. Wow. And I think it were a matter of him battering me and me clearly not going away and never being heard of again. Didn't quite go that way <laughs> because I beat him and I beat him proper. Mm. The next, I bet, feel like I, bet, I bet he never boxed again. <laughs> I bet yeah, being I beat by a fifty-four year old. Yeah. Did you feel like like you had that much sort of to prove as well? Yeah, like yeah. that's what I mean. And, you were so such a crowd there backing me up. Mm, does that really help? That does oh, it? Yeah, a lot of Mansfield folk there. Come on, Steve, and it were meaning. Yeah, twenty ten. Make the comeback. In the second fight back, they're a bit of a fluke, really, because. This guy I used to work with him at one time. Uh, went to the fight at the concert hall where he won this title, the EBF Middle Area Cruiserweight. He fought David A. Wow. And I wanted to fight him. <laughs> I'm crazy, aren't I? <laughs> that is mad though, isn't it? Because and he this took that particular step. day, the fight come. Mm. And it was still at Penine Hotel, believe it or not. Wow. One of John's shows, John Aston's shows. God bless him, I'm ever so pleased he helped me. Mm. And uh, I beat him. I beat the guy. Wow. I won the area title. Wow. And more to the point, I'd beaten the guy who'd been in with uh, David A and that. Mm. And I were never going to walk again. That's oh amazing. God, how wrong they that's were. That's an amazing. I mean, that's, <clears> is that 2011? That were about 2011. Yeah, Did yeah. was this when you were 54? Is this when, you said you were 54? 54, 55. So yeah, is this like when that. you got the, 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 the Guinness World Record? The next fight, Peter McJoe before Tim, and I got the Guinness World Record. Mm. Being the oldest professional yeah. boxer in the world. Oldest, yeah, oldest active professional boxer in the world. Mm. Amazing. And uh, then, have you, just, just to, a second, have you ever gone back to any of the doctors and the people that were like, no, you're never going to walk in and go, look, mate, is my belt that I've worn it here. I'm walk, I've walked here well, today. Yeah, you ever go back and go like, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to do that. I wanted to air trip down to London and do that to him. I suppose you probably got wind of it, you know, but after I all that. I thought to myself, they all already know. They would have found out. Yeah, exactly. Was, uh, it was very big. It was all over the TV, mm. the radios, the papers. I mean, I was going to fight Stallone at one time. Really? No. That would have been amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, that he, he had a serious shoulder injury and couldn't oh. do it. Oh. I know what that's like, don't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Jesus And I was Christ. also supposed to fight to Mickey Raw, but wow. to that, that didn't happen either. That's oh. amazing. <clears throat> but the, the big things are still happening for me. I mean, I had that, I had that big fight in Mansfield. I brought the world title here to fight for. That were great. Yeah, and because then, let, let's just say for people that are listening that don't know. So in two thousand four, you, you you got the you got the title for being the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then, and then you lost it, didn't you? Uh, I didn't actually lose it. I had I had to have some time off mm. due to an accident. Yeah, and you have to like give it, you have to give it up, sort of. Thing. No, I didn't give it up. This American coming behind me back. Yeah, and got it. Mm. Mike Palmer, his name. Mm. Yeah. And as soon as I, f I seen that, and I was back to fight fitness, yeah. I was in contact with him. <laughs> yeah, so we had he had a, he had a professional uh, bout and then gained the title yeah. for the, uh, the world is the oldest, the oldest boxer. Yeah, yeah. Boxer, professional boxer in the world. And I says, what about us fighting? He were a big lad, about six foot eight, something like that, Jeez. big yank. I says, what about us fighting? He says, let's sort it out. I'll come over there to you. I'll fight you over there. And uh, it was all going to be on planned. and everything. All planned. He failed his medical. He had like a shadow on the brain. Oh, oh, wow. He failed the medical. Jesus. Which put me... Well, where does that put you really? I mean... So could he... Yeah. Could, is that him done then? That's Fighting. him finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. So you had to then... I know you couldn't prove it to him. Not like, to him. That you could retain the title, but... Like, you could still prove it to the world that yeah. you could still be you could still be the oldest professional yeah. boxer well, in the world. I fought uh, another couple of times. I've got three Guinness World Records there. Mm. And uh, so, what what are they then? You've got all all the same. Oh, the right, oldest right. active professional boxer in the world. Right. You've 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 achieved it three achieved times. It three times. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Got it three times. Yeah. But this one, all being well, the boxing at sea. 
Yeah, let's let's just quickly because you, you came in with a, a big yeah. a big pile of uh, like colourful flyers and bits and bobs. So that's a that's a, an event that you're going to be fighting at. When's that? Hold it that way, but look, hold yeah. it so you can see it there. Yeah. That's it. That's going to be is it, what that's March. Let's see. March. All being well, that will be the second week in May. Yep, May that was twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. All being well. For the All COVID. being well because with the COVID, you just don't know. You can't say anything for for good, can you? Mm. But I'll be and fighting the, and, for that. And that's a C. That's, that's a, a C. C. That's that is what... actually on a big cruise ship. Wow. In the Bahamas. That's where it's taking place. Amazing. It's going to be brilliant. Like, and, I, and you say that's the first time that's ever happened. First time ever. So that goes in the history books as well. Wow. So, so who's this guy then? Jimmy, Jimmy Lloyd. Is he? Is he uh... Jimmy Lloyd, six belt champion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Turkish nationality. Uh, Actually, lives in Chester, would you believe? Oh. Chester. Is the uh, the president of the UBA, the Universal Boxing Alliance. He, he is. He is, oh. yeah. And how old is he? He's... Uh, a bit younger than you. He's about 15 years younger. 15 years younger. He's a good, good fighter. I've seen some of his fights. Good fighter. Mm. From what people told me, nice guy. Mm. Which... We mostly are, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's only these rumours. And like you right. said, as soon as, you know, the build-up happens, then the fight <laughs> happens, you know, yeah. uh, obviously you're going to win, aren't you, <laughs> aren't you Steve? Well, of course. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. That's, that's what you're going for. Well, I mean, like you said long. before, even after that, like you say, afterwards, the yeah. next day, you know, you're going to probably get on with him fine. Yeah. Go for the next the day, guy. we'll probably be sat on that ship having a meal together. That's exactly. It. So wait, hang on a minute. So do you get a free cruise as well? Then? I do. Oh, Lovely. Wow. My wife's coming with me. Oh, free Bahamas cruise. My wife to... brings me down to the ring. Right. Wow. That's amazing. She actually brings me oh, down to the ring. She always has done. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. She's got the glittery Union Jack swimsuit on. Yeah. The, tiara, the tiara. <laughs> amazing. Brilliant. Amazing. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. That's fantastic, mate. That's, that's support as well, that is. That to have oh, that level of great. support. Yeah. It's fantastic. She's my new backbone. And does she help patch <laughs> yeah. you up afterwards and stuff when you, if, you've got, <laughs> if you've got a few scrapes and that? And... She's, she's good that way, yeah. Well, that's she works cool. at the hospital. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> does she? Yeah. 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 So she's so been, she knows a bit about She's been busy this year then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I bet that's all you ever hear about, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> a bit of this she'll going be, on. Uh, she's coming on the cruise like and she'll be walking me down to the ring. Mm. Heart's on fire. John awesome. Cafferty's, that's my music. That's your music, oh. mate. God, it, it just does something. It, boom. Yeah. Do you know if you're just out and drinking with the lads or whatever, obviously not this year, if you're out with your couple of mates and, and that song comes on, are you straight away charged? Do you want yeah. to fight? Yeah. <laughs> you, zoom, <laughs> you, zoom you don't want to fight, but you zoom But where does it come yeah. from though? Like obviously that you, that song for you, but why does it mean something for you? Like why, where did it stem from? Where did it, did you hear uh, it, it? It actually comes from Rocky IV. Yeah. You and know some, when he's running, yeah, when yeah. he's fighting Drago and he's running in that snow, mm. that comes on. Ah, yeah, of course. Oh, it's on fire and uh, there's just something about that, mm. that record and... Uh, really fires you up. Yeah. 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 Really I, ignites the down, dynamite. I'm all right while I'm behind the curtains, but as soon as that comes on, it gets to a certain bit and you step through the curtains to do your walk down, mm. boom. Adrenaline it's levels. Never talking to me, I've gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm focused. That's it. Wow. That's the best. That's, yeah. that's, that's the best way. It's see, that's how it should get you, isn't it? What What happened with this as well? How this all come about? Mm. They've made a documentary, my life story. Yeah, yeah. Like, was that was that this one? Uh, that's the one. We'll that's hold it up there. again. Hold it up again. So the champ of champs, champ Steve of Ward, champs. the oldest professional boxer in the world. Coming so, soon. And you actually had a bit of uh, news just land as you were coming here, didn't you? Yeah. About this as well. So yeah. not only has this been made, but this uh, has also picked some awards up, hasn't it? This, it's picked about 35 international film awards worldwide, <laughs> including Hollywood Hills, LA, New York, Albuquerque, Italy, all the big wow. ones. It's blasted them all. Amazing. It's unreal. So it, it's not a publicly available, but it's... It, not it, as yet. Right, okay. So we'll see if we can find something to link up in the description. So if anyone, some information yeah. on it, maybe. You probably get to uh, like a short. Right. Short like a trailer. 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 Short trailer, yeah. Mm. Okay. But uh, you won't Amazing. get the, the main one yet, the big one mm. yet. And I think I've seen the trailer today. Yeah. And, yeah. and you said this, this came up because of this. So how did that happen then? They go hand in hand. Right. This has got a lot of publicity for me. 
right. a lot of publicity. I mean, winning all these awards and so forth, going all, all over the TV. I mean, it's supposed to be on the TV, hopefully, next month. Oh, wow. Now, yeah, that's going to start all over again. If then. it's near Christmas and everyone's at home as well, mate, yeah. Jesus Christ, can you imagine? And it's because of that that it sort of put you up there again. Mm. Right. So, and also, to top it all off, they're writing a, a book. A book? Autobiography? Autobiography of me. Oh, amazing. That's nice. in, that's about four weeks into now. Right. So, are you having to, do you have to go and sit and give them notes and oh, uh, how does that work? If you could see it, it's <laughs> unreal. He sits on that, that garden because nobody's there like at present. Nobody's living there. Right. I'm on my garden. <laughs> You're about 30 foot apart. And uh, we're doing it that way. Right. And it's mm. fantastic. Mm. Good way to do it. Like So he's just asking you ask yeah. questions and he's yeah. just... Right. Yeah. But, uh, he, he seems to think it'll be a real stormer. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. F- stuff that you've told us, I mean, already. I mean, it's just yeah. it's already... And like a lot of people might... I'd be watching this now thinking, well, he's doing it for the money. But like you already said before we started rolling, there's no money involved no, in, from, no from money, your side. No money for me. <clears throat> and, no, and, no money for me. And I think I, I like that because I think a lot of stories just get lost, don't they? Do you know, yeah. as, you know, as soon as someone's, you know, gone, then the stories are gone. So the fact that this is all being put into film yeah. and book, that's just amazing. It's going to live well, forever. And Mr. Keith Lodge has uh, done this like Kay Lens, as it says on the bottom, Kay Lens Productions. Mm. Now, he took a gamble because he's done other films and he's had a lot of success with him, but he's never done a documentary. This is his first one oh. and it's cleared up. It's mm. won everything. Mm. Keith Lodge, wow, what a fantastic guy mm. and a clever guy. Mm. He put it all together and everything. The film crew come up and uh, it was great filming, but very tiring. I bet it was. Yeah. Very tiring. All keeping... of a sudden you're like a movie oh, star, like yeah. Yeah, with no it's training, just cut, straight in there. Cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's got that IMO, IMO award system. IMO, yeah. Yeah, win that. Wow. And then uh, a good friend of mine from Leeds, Mr. Lee Murtaugh, a world-class referee, right. boxing referee, has made a film called The Straightener. <laughs> and guess who's in it again? <laughs> Amazing. So, so now you are what, actually in a film yeah, as well as a, your own sort of film. You, yeah, you film with your life. Yeah, that's a documentary I've done. This is a two-hour film. So, is it, what, so that's actually a story and, you're, and everyone's act, acting in it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right, wow. And what, it, what it actually is, to cut it all short, a straightener, he plays a part of the straightener, Anybody's got problems, mm. they come to him. Right, mm. he straightens it out. And uh, <laughs> sorts it out. A little bit, is a little bit like. Yeah, I'm the enforcer. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes. knew, you knew that were coming, yeah. didn't you? That's yeah. me. Yeah. And uh, it's it's got a good little twist to it. Mm. But yeah. This was that was that more was that more fun to do than the I know this one's about you or so that was serious about yeah me. But that's hard work mm. that's slog, hard work because this is a bit more of a drama but it's a bit more yeah, you're very lax yeah, yeah. I'm really it's honestly now I'm really looking forward to, I can't wait to watch these Look, this this one the champ of champs they had me actually in Burnstone Park looking at ducks and I thought this is a bit weird this is mm. with my wife. And mm. at four in the morning, early mornings, I was thinking, this is weird. But you know when you see it, oh my God. Like how, yeah. how they, everything yeah. blended in and oh, he knew he knew he knew awesome. he knew he could see it. He knew exactly yeah. the sort of production that he wanted. And he, he yeah, he could see that. So he knew well, where to put you at what time <laughs> four in the morning. See, there's another thing come off it as well. The uh, Steve Clamp. Hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it, Steve. Right, he's ITV Midlands. He does the lot, Central. Mm. All the bits on that. Mm. Yeah, the sports and everything. Mm. And he done a, a bit of a interview with me the other week. Right? Yeah. And it was all on there, yeah. Brilliant. Wow. It's like you say, the ball's rolling a bit, isn't it? Because these things are happening, you're back, yeah. up in, you're back up in like public interest, if you like, yeah, I suppose, aren't you? Yeah, it's back up top again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. I can't believe it. So when's that likely to be released so that like the public can actually watch it then? Do you know do you know yet? Or? The champ think, of champs. I'm thinking probably next month. Okay. Not TV, want it. Right, okay. Now they were gonna show it just before 
the lockdown happened, the first lockdown. Right. And pfft. now, hopefully, I've been in contact with him since, and they still want to do it. Mm. So now I'm just. I'm just hanging on and waiting. See what happens. Yeah. But either way, it will be out soon. Cool. Yeah. And then what it about the straightener? Is that something that can be, can you get the straightener? The straightener. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with that. It's gone to, I think it's gone to a film festival, that one. Right. So Lee was telling me. I'm not too sure on that one, but okay. uh, mm. no, that should be out soon. Well, if I can find some info red, on it, I'll, uh, I'll stick that in below as well. The yeah. Champa Champs had a red carpet screening. Wow. Wow. Now I could have had it anywhere, down London, wherever I wanted. Where do you think I had it? Mansfield. <laughs> John Fretwell sent it. Awesome. Did you? That's where I had um, it was my wedding reception there. Yeah. Marvellous place. When I was um, married. It was fantastic. It was really brilliant that. Mm. It's a lovely place though, isn't it? The way yeah. they just turn it around yeah. and all the lights inside, you're just like, wow, they can transform it. Yeah. yeah. I had them all crying because they were asking me questions and answers after a while. My dad ended up blind. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I had to go to work at 15. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stay on at school. Mm -hmm. I had to get out there and I had to earn some money, as little amount as I could. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it got. I mean, I was on about four pounds, 10 shillings, Jeez. which is 4.50 now, mm. a week. A week. And I was running to work. This one, we're at Nottingham, and running back mm. at about 12 mile a day. Jesus Christ. I couldn't, well, I couldn't afford the bus fares, like, not if I wanted to go out one night somewhere. Mm. Not to eat. Jesus Christ! Say so no people... wonder yeah, this age is still fit as a butcher's dog, though. Do you know what I mean? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> You're oh, running twelve uh, miles a day. Or, or... I've got a little mountain bike now. Like uh, it's only a cheap one, Muddy mm. Fox. It's about one hundred and thirty-nine pound, brand new. Mm. And I had it second hand. I tell you, mm. and I'll do a hundred mile on that. Yeah. yeah, on the road. I don't go off road. Right. Oh, yeah. We got a fucking yeah. hell, Steve. You yeah. are like I was going to ask you about this actually. Like how, what? So for, obviously for general fitness and things like that, um, you'd like to do something every day or do you like to every other every day? day? Every day. Have you? Have you yeah. always been like that? Yeah, I like to keep ticking over. Mm. <coughs> if you if you tick over, it's always easier to get up there. Mm. Definitely. As soon as, you, as soon as you stop using stuff, that's it. Yeah. I don't like to be a million miles away from me fight ready. Yeah. Uh, so you don't like to let yourself go too much, like a lot no. of boxers out there have oh, to, have, haven't they? Oh God, they do, and then it takes them X amount of time to get ready to get back, and, and like, but well, they're never the same, are they? They come okay. back, and you go, yeah, yeah. they're trying do, again. I do about six mile run in the morning, mm. every yeah. morning. Oh yeah, yeah. Do six miles, six mile running every mm. day. <laughs> okay, now and then <laughs> you're making me look. I'm like, <laughs> then I go to work. This is when the gyms are open, like because yeah. I train at Starbucks. Mm. They allow me to train up there at Stanton Hill at Starbucks. It's brilliant of them. They let me do my own thing. Nobody bothers me mm. or anything. I do my own thing. Cool. And that's great. Mm. They're there if I need them. So I do my six mile in the morning. I come home in the afternoon because I only work four hours, as I've stated. Mm. And I'll get on my bike and I'll go off a a bike ride, I don't know, probably 30, 40 miles, something like that. I don't do a big, big one like in the afternoon. That's not a big Just, one. 30 to oh, 40 yeah. miles on your bike every day. Mm. Every 30, day. 30, 40 miles. Then I come back, get showered off, and then I'm up the gym, like on the bags and everything. Then you yeah. go to the gym. Oh, God, yeah. Jeez. Jesus Christ, mate. Like you're training yeah. like three times a day then. Yeah, that, that's yeah. actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, every day. So and fit, then, mate. But oh, then, God. as it gets close to the fight, you see, my D day is Boxing Day, is Boxing Day this mm. year, right? Because that's when my hard training kicks in. <laughs> but if that's then, not hard enough, people, <laughs> you wait for it. <laughs> then I, I really will go for it because mm. I want to. I don't want to be lacking. Mm. I want to come home with that title. Yeah. It's a world to me. The yeah. best possible version of yourself possible. Years, years ago, when my dad had that little news agent, so I was in green. When I was born, he got a sepia picture. That's how bad it was. Uh, you know, wow. there were no black and white. It was like a sepia. Yeah. And he got a picture of me on the counter, and he says, one day this man will be the world champion. 
Wow. My time is coming close now, lads. Yeah. Now you're going to cop this up for love and money. No. no. This is the time. This is the time. You, can, you got, can feel it, you know. I've got my wife behind me. Yeah. She's fantastic. Lucy Ward, Louisa Ward. I can't have a better push power behind me. Yeah. She's <laughs> there if ever I'm a bit low or anything. Come on, stop being mad and beat yourself up. Get that's, out there and do another two mile. That's yeah. that's perfect. Though. That's what you want, isn't it? Like yeah, that, you and, couldn't ask for anything more, then, could you? And, you could, and you've got a lot of fans and a lot of support from everybody else oh, as well. By God. the sounds of it, a it's, lifetime of. It's nice when you're running and you've got people shouting to you, "Stay, Steve, Steve!" I thought, yeah, that's great. That's mm. great. That's a proper job. Yeah. Years ago, when I was down in Nottingham, I used to run around the forest recreation ground. Do you know where that is? Where the Goose Fair is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that top road is renowned for being the red light area. It is, yeah. Mm. And I used to run across Forest Road. Forest Road. Yeah. And the, uh, the pros would be saying, help Steve, help Linda. Help Steve, help Katrina. <laughs> all the pros. Yeah. They were all at school, were they? Wow. You're joking. Mm. When they're going half price, Steve, half price. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to, just because what they're doing, I don't shun them. No. Mm. Every, that's, that's everything right does do. something for a reason. Yeah. They all need. They might, so, they might not be in that position because they want to be. No, exactly. So, but yeah. yeah, I used to run down there like, and I used to shout to them back, oh, and it, and it was a great scene on TV the other mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mint though. Amazing. That's yeah, like support it, from so, every corner really, isn't it? That? Every culture. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you know when you've, when you've, done the boxing at sea and you've yeah. won and you know and whatever is, is is that is that are you done are you gonna carry on you know what's what's the what's the feeling are you gonna end on a high i'm not gonna tell you no fibs oh. you're gonna tell me no fibs if, if i do good there which i'm going to yep there's something i've already mentioned to charles mr russo charles russo the the man who puts that on you can only fight up to the age of 65. Right. You can only get licensed up to 65. Done. Right. Day before my 65th birthday, <laughs> <laughs> I would very much like to fight. Mm. I'd like it to be a big venue. I'd like to fight because then I would get the fifth Guinness World Record and nobody can ever beat it no because it's yes. the day before is the last possible day. i feel like i need to clap <laughs> nobody can wow. beat that. that yeah that's got to be a big plus mm. who do you want to fight then like who uh we'll just see what's anyone what. sort of we'll see what's what right. when he's close to and the, when's the that particular person when's when's, what, when's this date so so we well, all that, that'll be august that'll be august because uh i'll be 65 august the 12th all right. Next August. So, so this is May. Yeah. May, June, July, August. Next May. It's May. Just a few months, long, few months after you're boxing long. at the sea. <laughs> it's not long, is it? So we'll see what's what. There's, uh, there might be something in the offing, but I've been told to keep it stumped for now. Mm. Right. I think you know, I thought you were about to say, the day before my 65th birthday, I'm going to change that law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to change we'll that law we'll and I'll be, we'll I'll we'll be renowned for day. You never know, though. You could no. do. Do, do, you, do you feel like, you, at the moment, do you feel like you could possibly carry on past that? Do you feel like you've got a lot, if you were allowed to? Yeah, if yeah. I'm allowed This is to, what yeah. I mean. Yeah, but how yeah. long has this law been in place, right? Who said 65? But uh, life expectancy keeps going up, like retirement age goes up, so why can't that age go up? Well, it's supposed to be, I think the veteran category is supposed to be 55 to 65, mm. right. something like that. Mm. But uh, I can understand them doing it at 65 because mm. then it can mm. get a little bit dangerous, can't it? Yeah, so, definitely. See, the, the medical I've had to go through, oh, God, up uh, Liverpool. Went yeah. to my, my neck of Liverpool. the woods. Yeah. Well, I'm from Birkenhead. But. Yeah, all the way to Liverpool. Mm. And then you're there six hours. Jesus. Mm. Checking everything. Everything. Brain scans. God, they've got to know them, haven't they? They've See, they know, know in Liverpool to do all that, don't they? <laughs> They're the masters of all that sort of stuff. Yeah, brain scans and there's one there. <laughs> they told, they've told me. It's yes. confirmed. It's confirmed. They surprised me, but yeah. They didn't say we me. think there's one there. That's just how good them bloody machines are. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you have to have everything done. You go in for about two or three different brain scans. Mm -hmm. 
chess scans, everything. Mm. You name it, that's uh, it. And everything, everything's all right, clean bill of health? It, you've got to be, because right. if you're not, if you just hick up on one, mm. done. Wow. No way. Yeah, you're not allowed. And it's, you know, it's a frightening time, especially at 64. I mm. thought, oh, God, am I going to be all right here? Am I... I've, I've got like aches and pains or anything. Yeah, yeah then you, you start thinking, thinking. To approach yourself on mm, things. Yeah. And uh, no, everything great. Oh, That's absolutely so, fantastic, uh, Steve. <laughs> I got, I know. Yeah. I bet I'd, I'd probably have more ailments and stuff, I think, if I went to the moment, aches and pains and bits yeah. and bottles. You know I mean? He actually Knackered. come out, the main doctor come out, and there were some other boxers waiting to go in because it's a proper job where they do all the boxers. Right. WBCs, WBAs, boxing border control, everybody, you know. Mm. And they come out and he says, well, lads, he says, you want to be careful, he says, this guy's fitness is bringing everybody to shame. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, bloody hell, that's... <laughs> That's a bit. That's a big made statement. me feel great. That's, 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 made them feel like, oh, shit. Forget the train. I'll run them. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could have, couldn't you? Yeah. How fit you are. Could have got off, yeah, but, uh, most of the way, I bet. What about like your, um, being that fit as well? Obviously, we know with your exercise. Um, what about your diet? How does that, where does, or what happens right. there? Have you got a strict diet or have you never really had a strict diet? Uh, I've got a strict diet when need be. Yeah. Coming up to a fight, you'd be like, right. Coming up to a fight. Now, from from boxing day, as I've said, I'll be doing everything to the letter. Mm. But up to then, if I want a burger, I'll lay a burger. Mm. And if I want a double burger, I'll lay a double burger. Because mm. all it means is the next day, I'll just train for five minutes extra and burn mm. it off. This yeah. is it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. So you've got a balanced lifestyle yeah. Yeah. at the end of the day. So yeah. when it gets closer to fight fight day and whatever, then what, what changes? What do you, do you focus solely on just a, a, a set diet? So, yeah. so many- just Less burgers. You know, yeah, less burgers, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, no burgers then. Uh, mm. Everything just has eat to be clean, don't you? Proper. you? Yeah, just clean. eat. Yeah. You eat fresh as well. Mm. I don't go on all the packed meats and that. I yeah. don't want the white meats. I go on white, uh, red meats. I go on totally on white meat. Yeah? Yeah. Do you? Chicken, turkey. It's boring. Mm. But uh, people say, you can eat with this sauce and it's nice. And I can't tell the sauces no. because then I'm eating the wrong foods. Yeah. People don't realize. Sure. That's like, good. Yeah. That's good that you said that. You know, that just proves that you are that strict when it comes yeah. to stuff like oh, that. you have to be. So no processed yeah. shit. No, not you processed meats. None of that crap processed meats. You just like the nice clean foods yeah. and the white I'd, meats. And the... I don't want all this, you know, getting there and being flumpy. Yeah. Now for that last fight, that world title fight, I had to go up in weight. I wanted to be heavyweight. I had to go up. Mm. And I'm the first to admit, when I've seen the film, I've been watching it, I thought, you are a fatty. <laughs> really fat. Carrying a belly and everything. I had to, to get to that weight. Mm. This time, I'm boxing really clever. Because... Uh, I'm not saying anything because we're going to America, it'll get to him. <laughs> get to Jimmy Lloyd. <laughs> Let's just say there'll be no weight problem at all. Mm. I'll be heavy weight. Oh. Mm. Right. You did say this about boxing, don't they? About um, changing your weights and stuff like that. And is it yeah. a good idea and things like that to go up and or to go down? Yeah. Like, you know, is it is it because a, a lot of people that try that, that do not, did, the majority of the time don't really succeed, do they? But like people mm. like, um, um, oh my god, mine's just gone blank. What's his name? The Irish guy, McGuigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry. yeah. Um, he, he went up and down in, in a couple yeah. of fights, hasn't he? But he won, so it can happen, can't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's... I used to fluctuate myself. Mm. Oh, okay. So, what's your weight standard? Middle, like middleweight, is it my proper weight since I come back as a cruiser, mm. cruiser weight, and I'm at the bottom of the cruiser weight limit now. I'm, I'm going into the realms of heavyweight. Mm. So it's 14 stone four and above. Is it? Heavyweight, yeah. And you want, obviously, it's got to be good weight because yeah. obviously muscle weight's heavier than fat and blah, that's blah, right. blah. That's right, that's right. It's got to be good weight. But like we were saying before, like um, there's that many different weight classes in boxing nowadays 
Um, I could say traditionally there used to only be eight and now there's like 17. Oh. The government bodies nowadays says yeah. there's 17. You just don't know what's happening. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, there's that many. It's the same with all the, all the different places where you can get these belts now. Yeah. You know, you've got your WBC, it used to be the big four. Mm. WBC, WBA, IBF, so on. Yeah. But now there's so many concerns out there. Mm. Like it's a little bit too much, isn't it? Uh, like they could have just stuck to the big four or maybe... A bit swamped on us. Maybe five, but... It, it is very, very swamped now. But I'm not one to say just stick with the big four. Mm. No, no. Mm. Because the door's got to be opened for other people as well. Mm. Because one person isn't a WBA top man mm. doesn't mean to say he can't be a champion and mm. a top man yeah it's mm. a lower category so there's there's other places they've got to have open mm. but not as many as what are at present yeah mm. i think probably more people box now and more areas yeah. and they just they've slowly been introduced and before you know it there's just loads oh, they well don't forget your ladies as well they didn't they used to be lady boxers didn't they that's true mm. that's very true yeah. Uh, let's be honest. By God, when you say ladies, everybody says the same one. Mm. Katie Taylor. Right. Wow, what a girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a girl. <laughs> I don't know if I'm... Fantastic. I don't know. Yeah, women fighting. I don't know. It's mad though nowadays, but the, I mean, I've, I know women from the gym and you know, you know when they're on testosterone and stuff now. Oh, yeah. It's so much more like... The, it's, I don't mind them fighting. I like to see the women fighting. That sounds bad, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, you know when you've got Skip the baby that. oil? Skip. I don't know what it is. When I know always... what you mean now. I know what you mean. I like yeah. to see the women fighting, but I'm a bit of a stickler. Mm. When they fight, come on, let's see them wearing the breastplates. Mm. You know, the protecting plate here. Yeah. Because yeah. no woman wants to be it there, do you? Yeah. No, it's no. like us being it down below. Mm, exactly. We don't want that either. I've it. been to the Mansfield Civic Centre a few times. Yeah. Um, you know, Roger. Yeah, is Roger it, Brotherhood. Yeah. Good man. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he's, man. he's told you to come on here. He says he will do. Um, from Body and Soul Gym, and he's been doing it mm. for over 20 years, hasn't he? Training people. And, um, Good man. Yeah. And what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So he, he he sort of arranges these boxing events at the Mansfield Civic Centre, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I've asked, like I said, about seeing the women there and the last time I went I couldn't they were knocking each other for six and you know, obviously I don't that'd know if it's because of the hair cool. as well and the ponytail you know when they get hit yeah. and the ponytail and you go yeah. <laughs> all his hairs going everywhere and I'm going oh whoa whoa <laughs> but they were absolutely they, they love it they were they were, they were they were k killing each other and I was like this is wow I was, I'd was be scared to get in the ring with them I used to pop up sometimes to Body and Soul because um, big friends of Roger mm. and Ailey his wife mm. and uh, Legends Bar yeah Used to go up there, like, and uh, used to just help him train and that all the bags from him, get him going. And, yeah. And, uh, oh, God, some of them, they, I said, come on, faster, faster, faster. And after that two minutes, they'd stagger away. <laughs> you think, you don't forget me, do <laughs> That's it, that, that's it, though. But you're pushing them, you're pushing them. You're doing, you know, yeah. you're doing your bit, you're helping them. And, you know. Yeah. Have, you, have you never thought about, I mean, a lot of people don't like to take their careers and make it into a job as such. Have you ever thought about doing more or, or have you done more like, thought about going to work in a gym and help training uh, or stuff like that, you know, live live it all yeah. day, every day or do you think that'd be too much? You're going to think bad of me now. Right. But there's no way on God's earth I ever want to do that. Right. Okay. I've done it before. Uh, I could have put this. Okay. You train somebody. You train them for a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get them really good, nice and sharp, can throw the punches and everything, and it becomes summer. And they go out and they find this very, very devious thing called a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your boxing's gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know this from I'm, experience. I'm sorry, they've got the, they've got the muscles, they've got yeah, the physique, and they go, oh, hang on, yeah, <laughs> there you are. You're in your track suit, you're shouting at them, you're telling them to it, you're getting on to them, you're pushing them to nearly passing out. I'm sorry, but I don't go as well as a woman. The woman wins. Mm. Yeah. I've had it a couple of times and I always said after that, 
I'm never training with anybody again. Is it, is, it, is it disheartening for you then? Because you, yeah. you put so much into it. And then oh, God, yeah. Right. You, you feel like it's been, well, it has been all for nothing. Mm. Yeah, I can understand that. I can and understand it, that. It hurts. Yeah. Especially because, if someone's good as well and they get yeah. to the point where they think, you know what, this, this person is going to go places. Well, you see, a lot of people see it just from one perspective, one-sided perspective. And that's, oh, is it so? He's gone off with a woman. Mm. They don't see all the heart and heartbreak what you've had mm. yourself. Are we going out tonight? Well, no, I'm training the lads. Don't forget, we've got to be there next week at this special day. Oh, I can't make that. I'm training that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, you put a you lot sound, off. Of course, yeah. People don't see that, do they? No, no. And it, it can cause a lot of friction and arguments. Mm. And then you've gone through all that for that lad mm. to go off and you think, no, no, no more. No, no, fair play. Fair yeah. play. Yeah, understand completely. It's, it's a difficult thing. Mm. Now, when I'm up, up there like training at Starbucks. If anybody up there asks for help, I don't push myself on anyone, I just do my thing. Mm -hmm. But if anybody comes to me and says, Steve, how did you this punch? I will take time, I will show them, I will get them mm. doing it. Mm -hmm. Because the, the trainers up there are fantastic guys. Mm. They really are fantastic guys. There's three of them and they're the bee's knees. I've got mm. a lot of respect from all. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, sometimes they can't do everything because if they've got 30 or 40 people... Of course, yeah. There's three of them. Mm. Kev, mm. Liam and James. Mm. Great guys. You couldn't, couldn't come close to them. Mm. But there are only they're, three guys. They, they can only do so much, guys. can't You've they? got to remember this, yeah. yeah. So if you can help out where you can so with someone. Yeah. Sometimes I've had, I've had them come to me like... Uh, how do you do this, Stephen? Yeah, I've, I've helped him. I mm. don't mind helping him, God. And there's so much We've into it. There. Yeah, there's yeah. so much into boxing though, isn't there? Yeah. But like you say, how do you throw this punch or how do you stand this way and how do you position yourself and whatever, this punch or that punch? And it's not just throwing punches, is it? Do you know what I mean? No. There's so much into it. Like, See, that guy's a big body puncher. Right. Jimmy Lloyd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was a, that was a yeah bring it on I, mate, bring it on <laughs> bring it on Jimmy Lloyd I train really hard on my body are you core yeah mm. really hard on my body I mean you know the big medicine ball mm. 20 pound yeah you're gonna say drop it on you now no I'll have a thousand hits yeah mm. yeah <sighs> you don't drop it on you now this is what I'm saying about people up there sometimes they ask me things and they say, yeah, can we train with that ball? I says, yeah, if you train sensible. Mm. Well, lay down and admit it. I says, no. Whenever you get it with a ball, you've got to have fresh air behind you. Otherwise, your kidneys takes all that power. Really? Yeah. And that can cause you a lot of damage, as you know, kidney damage. Yeah, internal damage, isn't it? It's just... Yeah. So if you're doing anything like that, go up into a crab position, somebody over you banging you like that. I see. Oh. So you have got that flexibility. That's right. Like yeah. as if you were stood in the ring, you've still got something. You're not against the wall, are you? Yeah. I see what yeah. you're saying now. Yeah. So you do some, le some, uh, some, yeah. some leeway. Some, I do it that some way. give. I stand up and I walk onto him. Mm. <laughs> I'm smack me or hey, run at me or whatever they want. Yeah. Let him do that. At least you can. But I wouldn't for a minute go against that wall with it back against something solid and let them do it. Yeah. Like, it's yeah just, just squashing it against the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, you know, your body, it'll only take so much before it kicks off. I bet, yeah. I bet some people in that gym that are just normal people training normally looking at you like, what the fuck is he doing? I've, I've seen like, yeah. Jesus Christ, is he beating himself up or something? Like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. but it's, wow. it's, it's conditioning, isn't it? That's yeah. what they say. I've seen people in the gym before, um, you know, they're doing crunches and stuff like that, or, or they're doing hang, hanging leg raises. Yeah. And every, every time they go up and down or hold it and down, and someone will go, bam, 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 in the stomach with boxing gloves. And then yeah. they'll do another one. Yeah. And I just punch them with, with the boxing gloves. It's and I did used to think, <laughs> what, what does that do? I used to think, what does that do? I don't understand why. Well, but, you see, people say to me, how do you build your stomach up like that? Because I've hmm. had cars load on my stomach for a party piece. Really? <laughs> Years ago, only for a bit of fun. Oh, no. <laughs> As you do. As yeah. you do and then what, you chucked it off? <laughs> get it off. You just took it down. Uh, they say, yeah, how do you get your stomach that hard? 
it's rumbling. <laughs> it's answering you. <laughs> you, want some, you want some lovely white turkey. I says, uh, I says you've got to think. Your, your arms move around, don't they? Mm. Your head moves around, your neck moves around. Does mm. your stomach move? Not really, no. It's a static mm. muscle. Yeah. So you need a static exercise. Yeah. You mm. can do all your sit-ups. Yeah. They'll, they'll do you a bit of good. Mm. They're not do your back any good, like. No, oh, this is the thing. You know, you know the actual the forty-five, the sit-up bench. The that bench. does my lower back in. Yeah. Especially if I'm holding a weight and all this, and people if, are holding if, weights. If and if you want to build your stomach up, you do what's known as bananas, mm. and you lay on the floor, legs together, lift them up, lift your back up in the shape of a banana. Yeah, so you're doing your legs and and your and, and yeah. And your no, body at the same. You just do it together. Yeah. And you hold it. Yeah. All right. Hold yeah. it like your body's like a letter U, hold like a banana, a minute, like you say. Then down, then another minute, then mm. down, build up. Then if you can do it the next day, two minutes, then three, then four, then five. What, holding it up for that long? Yeah. Jeez. And it's a static, a static <laughs> muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Needs a static exercise. That's it. I, it's I, it's isom isometric training. Isometric training. Yeah. Tension. Isometric, there's two types of training, aren't there? There's isometric yeah. and isotonic. Isotonic just means a moving muscle. Yeah. And isometric right. is like if I try and push this wall as hard as I could yeah, for like right. a minute, I'm going to really sweat. But every muscle well, is just, yeah. every muscle is tense. Pushing. Static training. They used to, the man who done that, uh, oh, some of these old films. Mm. Have you ever seen at the beginning of the film that man who holds the globe up on one knee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His name the Atlas, is man. Charles Atlas. Atlas, oh, yeah. yeah. He developed isotomic mm. dynamic tension training, which was like hand against hand, pulling, pushing, yeah, on your leg, on your neck, and that pushing against your own. Yeah, kind it's of mad fire. because it's you're not actually moving. Thing. It's a proven thing. Mm. It does work. Mm. He developed it because not everybody could afford to go to gyms yeah. or buy the equipment. So he wanted to develop something special where everybody's got a chance. Mm. That's what he done. Jesus. That's wow. a magical It does make tension. sense though. It does make mm. sense. I know what you're saying. And it it's does just, just like, like when you push as hard as you can on arm, yeah. a hand against a hand as hard as you can. Like, you're not really moving, it, it but your work. muscles are twinging yeah. like mad. It's the same with some of the martial arts. I mean, Tiger Claw. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Put your hand on. People don't realise you can be talking and you can be training because you're trying to pick that that up. Yeah. Trying to pick the table up. Yeah. Let's just try, try the target claw. Really. That's what you're saying. And that yeah. that gets you great strength. Really? So, you know, you break bones and uh, <laughs> <laughs> So they say, I don't know. <laughs> apparently, it's apparently. tiger claw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like having them, hand, like them, because your fingers, all your digits are actually just tendons. There's no muscles in them. No, no. So it's all, it's all tendons. tendons yeah. So like, <clears throat> you can't obviously thicken and your tendons, like you kind of muscle. It's a lot harder, but like you said, the more, probably the more yeah. isometric iso training. I saw a video of a guy and he was a, it was a free, he was a freestyle rock climber. So no yeah. ropes or nothing. And he had Very this, powerful. he had this training rig in this building or whatever. And it was just this wall with these little cracks and bits and bobs. Yeah. And he was literally like sticking his finger in and just like lifting his entire body up with yeah. this one <laughs> little time. I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. my God. And he was like, doing oh that like God. exercise, Unreal, hanging off just two fingers and stuff like unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable though, isn't it? The strength you can have so from you, your tendons. You can, you can have your strength and what do you think you do to make them work fast? Mm. What's helped me a lot? I don't know. I type, so you're I think it's going to move quite fast. Do <laughs> you, not, you not believe this? Piano. <laughs> is it piano or I'm keyboard? I'm also an accomplished pianist. Really? Is it? I'd love to be able to play the piano. Oh, I would. Back home, I've got a, a Wurlitzer organ. Wow. No way. A three manual. C, C to C, sing locked in front board. How long have you done that for? So I, I'm about 10 year old. I had to do it. If my dad were taking me to the box and my mum wanted me to do the piano. Right. I but I bet you're grateful so. though. I bet you're grateful for both though, aren't you really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah because so You must be really good on the piano then. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. I bet you didn't read music. You got all the books and everything. I used to read music. Nah, I just play by ear. Yeah. Play by or by ear. Wow. I've, I've always just wanted like a, a <laughs> skill like being able to play the piano or doing some kind of magic where you can just turn up somewhere and go, oh, it's a piano. <laughs> I've, just, I've just, just go into this amazing yeah. song. Have you, know? you ever thought, Steve, just like coming out to your own music on a piano? 
yeah. on your own. Yeah. This is my, I wrote this piece myself, people. Welcome myself. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've tried that and I've, I've, I've not been able to, you know, like it enough to <laughs> that, do it. Yeah, you, no, you need more but upbeat yeah, music yeah, than that. It's more upbeat, you know, I've got my drums on the organ and that. Yeah. No, no, I'll stick no. with cafeteria on some fire. <laughs> so have you ever played places then, no? Uh, I have, yeah, mm. one or two. Like, you, you know, like it just to do it for yourself? Just and to do it for myself, mm. you know. You give it a go, thought, the, nah, uh, I like to just, how often do you play now then? Oh, not very often. No. You know, just If I've got a problem, mm. I'll go on the piano. It right. soothes you. And the problem soon goes. Yeah. Uh, it, what do you mean, like a mental, but like you're thinking, like yeah, I'm a bit stressed? If, if, if I'm a bit stressed or anything, mm. you see, with, so with the I see straight away, I would think there, he's going to hit the bag. He's going to yeah. hit the punch bag. He's stressed. No, not always. Not, not always. always. Not always a bag there to it. <laughs> okay, I won't make a joke out of that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> but uh, mm. yeah, sometimes you just get on the piano like and do. Do Have you got a bag, like a punch bag in your house? Or? I haven't, no. No. But you got any glue? But my wife's got the pads. Has she got the pads, yeah. Oh, if wow. I've just bought her a new set of pads, they come yesterday. Does she, is she cool with it? Is she cool with you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet she's strong and all that. She's but, been taking your punches well, for 50 years. Well, these pads, what she's got, it's the new hit jab pads, the on handles, oh, flexes. Oh, right. Because I don't want her suffering. With yeah. bad so you get the best possible ones it, that you can, yeah. And I, I don't take uh, full force or anything, obviously. Mm. But these, they're like, to look at them, they're like a table tennis racket mm. with an eight standard handle. Uh -huh. And she just holds them up and moves and holds them yeah, up. Yeah, I've and, seen them, yeah. Like, more like a target, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> See, she's a zombie yeah. instructress, so mm. she's fit. Right. Mm. Promise, mean, she's fit enough to move and all Say, this. I, I bet you two just embarrass all your neighbours and because you two, <laughs> both of you sound fit as a fiddle and everyone else getting your age is winding down you're still winding up aren't you both of you yeah, by the sound yeah. of it this is it she, really she brilliant she like coming runs with me though she doesn't no I uh, I'd, I'd done it on her I shouldn't have done it like I said so, are we going to run this is about a year ago she says yeah I'll come and run with you because she does the zombie like mm. three days a week like she she actually trains them she's an instructress oh yeah wow and uh, so I'll only do a little, and I took her about 14 or 15 miles. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Zumba and was cancelled for a few days then. <laughs> I tell you what, the, it were a red mist day. Yeah. Jeez. I'm glad the chip shop were open. Let's just stay there. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to get nothing cut from it. <laughs> I'm indefinite. Awesome. It's when, you, when you're not used to it, though, you, if you exert yourself that much, you can, like the pain you can be yeah. in. Well, it's different muscles. Mm. I'd probably be the same trying the Zumba. Yeah. She's yeah. wanting me to go to it. She says, it's not me moving. Even no, she just wants her own bike, Steve. Yeah. She says, she's, no, I'm not going. I'm she's not like, going. come on, I'll, I'll, be, I'll only be half an hour. She'll keep you going for like two you can, hours. You can imagine it. If I stand at front, you were about 30 women looking at my ass. <laughs> and if I stand at the back, then I'm going to be buzz eyed. Then you're going to go, to, <laughs> then you, yeah, then you're going to Chippy again on the way over, aren't you, mate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chippy for a week. I, I went, I went spinning with my mum once. My mum does spinning. She loves it. She absolutely uh, loves it. And it's I, good. I, I did that Sorry. once. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking hell. Mm. Honestly, there's a room full of, my mum's watching, I'm sorry for swearing, mum. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a room full of like, you know, the all women, there was no other, apart from the instructor, the instructor was a bloke. Mm. And like all these women there of different shapes and sizes and ages and all sorts of things. And they're, mostly wipe the floor with me if I'm being yeah. honest honestly mm. they, they all just well, smashed it all they're standing up fitness. sitting down they're doing this yeah. and I'm just like Bleh. absolutely you know dying yeah, unbelievable fit. well it's it seems anything you've got to get into it break into it gently yeah yeah mm. it's no good going like a bull at a gate at it definitely well, mm. I, 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 I cycle myself you see so I thought oh it's, it's, yeah. it's cycling isn't it but no it was, no it's not cycling no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it something else it was intense <laughs> have you been on that Harvey Adams stadium no at Bilbra, they reckon that is one of the best cycle stadiums here. Really? Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Is that the new indoor? No, outdoor. Oh, yeah. Outdoor. They used to have uh, one with the beveled sides there. Yeah. Right, right. I'm going back years, like when I was down Nottingham, I always used to be up there on it. But they got rid of that and now it's uh, on the corner Sports Village. Mm -hmm. oh, and okay. you go around, or it's not just going round and round and round. You, 
different curves of different courses. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to <coughs> Sher Pines. There's a few routes through Sher oh, yeah. Pines and that, which uh, you go off road in then. Yeah, yeah. I prefer yeah. getting muddy. I like Land Rovers and stuff as well. So yeah, yeah. I like all. I like. I like. Yeah, getting in the modern. I've area. just sold a quad. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, but the quad goes or to kill me. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Qu this is. I have come off a quad before. <laughs> into, into a load of nettles. Four fifty monster quad. Oof. I think mine was for the road. Yeah, for the road. Yeah, yeah. And they were diner tuned. Wow. By God. It, I don't like it, how they turn. They, they don't turn. Do that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, 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 like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't. Turn. You got to lean into a turn, yeah. definitely. No, uh, I had it for about two months, and I thought, no, it's either me or the quad. I'd like one. I'd like one. I'd like a lot of things, but you know, garage space, money, yeah. time, insurance. There's a lot of oh, things stuff on me about it. But it's uh, as long as you get by and you're a good life, that's all. That's, that's all it. what matters. Isn't that's it. it. And Stay fit and healthy. Yeah, yeah. That's something you can't buy. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely, definitely. Yeah. Good piece of advice, that isn't it for the people? Yeah, I can't exactly. believe we've been going like an hour and twenty minutes. I know. <laughs> so yeah. So what? What's uh, final thoughts then, Steve? What's just recap for people? Um, so yeah we've got a couple of films coming up documentaries actual yeah. proper film what's your what's your name in it what's your Slugger Slugger, Slugger. Slugger. Is it, his name's Slugger in the <coughs> film <laughs> called The Straightener so look out for that yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find, we'll find, I'll be able to find various clips and things I'll stick yeah, them all in yeah. the description of the video so anybody yeah. watching can obviously it's a, it's a, well that Champ of Champs as well that, that documentary that, one, that one's gonna the Champ of Champs blow you, that'll blow your mind I can't wait to see that you know it. Uh, so I'll put some uh, put some links to stuff on there as well. It, it's something what I never thought would happen. Yeah, it's amazing. And the book as well. Don't forget the book, the autobiography. Yeah, yeah. So well, they're about four or five weeks into that now, and I tell you, the man, uh, John Brindley, mm. his he, name. He's like the like the author. He's yes, and he's from Leicestershire. And he done one on the Forest football team, Forest Legends, oh, that yeah. book. Oh, right. That is done by him. And no he's, he's a very lad. clever, accredited That's it. writer. That's it. How long do you think it's going to take, then, the book? Do you think it's going to take a while? I, suppose. I don't know. He's quite a lot of stories just to touching on his dip present because mm. uh, you can't rush perfection, though, can you? Well, you I'm sorry. Know. I'm sorry if he's watching this. I'm sorry if we spoiled any bits of your book, mate, by covering <laughs> stuff in the podcast. But you know, we got we got here first, so it's, <laughs> it's first come, first served. Oh, there'll there'll be things in the book what have mm. been said. There'll yeah, be there's sure. mentioned I'm sure in there's. depth, very very much in depth. Yeah, and yeah. when it, like you say, when it's been wrote by like a, yeah. an author like that, and people, a lot of people out there just would rather read, wouldn't they? Like, yeah. I'd rather read his book. It's, it's a real quality. Man. Like, like people say about I don't know Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, know that you yeah. can't beat the book. Do you know what I mean? People they, would they prefer say that, don't they? Mm. Well, I, well, I, well, I'll look forward to reading it, mate. Definitely, and it's watching because, this as well. Definitely, I think it's because when people read a book, they use it's, it's, it's all in their imagination yeah. as well. Yeah. They're picturing that you are doing this. They're picturing you doing well, that. Well, or, well, that's what people always say. Is that, well, that's that's not how it was in the book. And I think a lot of that is their interpretation of it, what yeah. they've read in the book yeah. and how they it's thought. All, so yeah. Fluctuates, mm. don't touch yeah. it. Like what about Fifty Shades when that come out, mate? I went to the <laughs> cinema with the girl I was with and, and another couple, and, and both of them went, "That's not my Mister whatever his name is, Mister Grey, Mister Grey. That's not my Mister Grey." And she's like, "That's not my Mister Grey either. What's yours like?" And they're like, "Because they've got this Mister Grey image in the head." Yeah. Don't you tell me that you went to the cinema with that girl? You went about twenty times <laughs> with every girl. <laughs> hey, cut, cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, but no, man. I'm only kidding. Don't worry. <laughs> No, it was good though. I did it's actually good. enjoy it, you know, but I, I watched the first two, but I still haven't watched the third one apparently. It's like, I don't even know what the third one's about. But, no, I, uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, Steve. No, like, just just very finally though, in regards to this then, is that something people can buy tickets for? I mean, I know it's a cruise, so it'd be a bit of a... The fight. Oh, there could be people in and around the area watching that might think, you know what, a cruise. and 800, 800 cabins. Right. Come. Wow. So you can't get a ticket for that then. <laughs> Uh, is it going to be? Is that going to be aired or anything? Maybe is it going? I know it's going to be on a cruise ship. Uh, there must no, be a no. camera there. Yeah, it's going yeah. to be a pretty monumental time. Yeah, I've been. Uh, somebody's coming from California. Michael Locker, Lockyer. Hmm. Right. He's an actor. Plus, he's a filmmaker as well. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. I don't know whether he's related to Heather Lockyer. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Lucky man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, 
So hopefully he's going to be recording that. Yeah, and then, and, yeah. and then you never know, that might get aired yeah. or released after, which would be great. It's, they've got to film it. They've got oh, to film yeah. it. It's the yeah. first time at sea. It's it's a, you know, it's, it's a legendary fight. It's definitely so. going to be filmed. Yeah. And also, it's going to be uh, pay-per-view. Ah. Now then, that's one. He wanted it to go on pay-per-view and they couldn't do it globally, something like that. Mm. I don't know the ins and outs. So uh, he sorted that. I think he's the owner now of the place. What does it? Like the pay-per-view thing. Yeah, he bought it. <laughs> That's one way to do it, isn't it? What do you mean you can't do it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll buy you. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so now they so, are doing it then? Yeah. Right. And oh, it sounds. So not, people will be able to see the fight up on yeah. pay-per-view. And it's not going to be dear either mm. because he wants to make the unaffordable affordable oh yes. god oh god you never know then might... talking a few dollars that means i can might even be able to yeah. afford it then <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the as regards tickets uh gone all i could say is if you go on google google charles russo and see if you can get any yeah. look off him mm. but i do know Last time he mentioned tickets, he was down to seven tickets, uh, seven cabins left. Mm. Seven. I'm gonna, my next question was, if there's any going, Steve, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Put a good word in there. VIP yeah. tickets. Well, I'll be there. I'll be fantastic. It's, uh, it's going to be brilliant. Mm. It's how, brilliant. how long are you actually on the boat for then? Just a few days, a couple uh, of days? No. The old cruise, I think it's about seven days. Yeah. Amazing. Like nice. I'd love to do a cruise, actually. Is the fight sort of in the middle? Yeah, uh, so, no, mine's the second day. Is it? Is it? So, so yeah. Got the rest of the day. So you got the rest you of the You've got five days yeah. to enjoy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Just to enjoy and, uh, and lap it up. It is going to be really good, like, we mm. we being that second day, mm. get it done, dusted, and get some of them sunrise, eh? Yeah, Definitely. rather than Definitely. be like, it's like the final mm. night. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's good in a way, but all week. You're not going to be it's enjoying the holiday, yeah. Because yeah. you'd be sat on edge all year, waiting yeah. and waiting and waiting for the fight yeah. all week. So it's good to get it out of the way, definitely. Or oh, the build up of it, uh, it's going to be unreal. But now, he's come up with this idea. And I want to thought of this. I don't know if you would. He says, hmm, we don't know whether you've got sea legs. Sea legs? Okay. And we don't know what your breathing's going to be like because it's altitude out there. Wow, so he's thought of the things that, like you say, you wouldn't yeah. think about, yeah. No, I wouldn't have thought of that, would you? No. So what do you think he's doing? Wow. He's taking us out there, week, uh, I think it's April, three days cruise <laughs> to see what we're like. like a test and, cruise. And get us right. A test yeah. cruise. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, uh, I say, mate, the things you have to do, eh? That's oh. amazing, I know. Sounds it's like great. hard work, that, it's doesn't a, it? The it's, a it's a slog. It's a sad, sad life. It's a slog, isn't it, mate? It's a slog. But someone's got to do it, haven't they, pal? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> honestly yeah. mate yeah thank you so much like we've said before uh, every single link that we can possibly put in, in in down below below the video we'll put in there so people can but press yeah, on the links, links to some of your fights it. and stuff as well that we can find and just yeah links to everything that we can find on you you know you, you yeah. know what i mean so it's no, all I really there appreciate it and yeah I, I, I can't i genuinely can't wait to look to to watch that definitely that one specifically this will, this looks like fun but that i'm really looking forward That's to watching a that serious thing yeah. that is it to, all about your life story yeah we, went, uh, we had some big hitters proper big people like come to that red carpet screening and uh, mm. it, it was over in a flash it, mm. it was weird the mm. whole night long dresses and all in tuxes and glitz and glam oh god just, just seemed to go by in a blink did it was it just yeah. like over yeah Right. They, they always say time flies when you're having fun, don't they? And I it suppose for you, that did. everybody there was to to see you, yeah. mm. to look at you and to your life. So yeah, wow, well, that was I got, amazing. Uh, I got two standing ovations, and did you? It in gobsmacked me. The first time ever, <laughs> I'd got a lump in my throat, and wow. uh, I found it hard to to talk and say anything. Like, like yeah, oh, wow. wow overwhelming yeah. yeah wow yeah steve you are an absolute like your name suggests a legend, a legend. yeah and you, you have definitely put your stamp on this earth and yeah. you know just, just you know you've made it when you're on wikipedia mate yes. you know what i mean how did you know i was on that oh i put your name in google <laughs> mate you first you know put steve ward in, in google that's the first thing that comes up pal just remember one very important thing mm. i said to you say things for how it is mm -hmm. and i do you've got two arms 
I've got two arms, two legs, one head, and I shit on the same toilet as everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's mm. it. I won't talk to for anybody. That's it. I fight for myself. I fight for my wife. I fight for Mansfield. Yes. And queen and country. Nice, mate. Yeah. That'll yes. never be different. Fantastic. Wow, what a note to end on. What a note to end on. And on that note, and on that bombshell, as <laughs> I say, on other programmes. Yeah. I might edit that bit and put it at the start. I know. That was fantastic. I think we might need to, actually. That's, yeah. that's a good idea. We'll yeah. do that. So, yeah. Thanks, Thanks for guys. tuning in. Thanks for coming in, mate. It's been amazing. Yeah. It's been amazing to learn a bit more about you and to talk it's to you and stuff. Thank really you so much. I'm going to remember this forever. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. It's been, le been a legendary podcast. So. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Take care. Thanks for listening. Peace out. Peace out. Awesome.